Yo, what's up? This is Christopher, and I am back with another Final Cut Pro 10 Basics for Beginners video. Now, in this video right here, it's not a tutorial. It's more of a kind of an opinion piece. And a lot of times I'll see people, when they first purchased Final Cut Pro 10, they'll ask, like, you know, whether it's on Twitter or a forum board or somewhere. I'll see this question get asked a lot. It'll say, hey, I just purchased Final Cut Pro 10, or I'm thinking about purchasing Final Cut Pro 10. Should I purchase motion or compressor or and compressor? And the simple answer to that is for motion, yes, you should definitely purchase motion five. For compressor, it's more of a maybe. Maybe you should purchase it if you meet a certain criteria or if you have certain needs. Um, probably not if you don't have those particular needs so let me start with motion and tell you why i feel it is an essential purchase when you purchase final cut pro 10. so first let's start off motion is a 49 dollar and 99 cent application it complements final cut pro 10 in a way that other like motion graphics applications don't now as an example you could use after effects and, you know for a project and then import that to Final Cut Pro 10 but it's a lot more stats a lot more expensive and it essentially does the same thing as motion now there may be a few things that you can do in After Effects that you might not be able to do in motion I'm not exactly sure what those things would be because I can do anything in motion it's an awesome piece of software in my opinion for $50 it is the absolute best application that you can get for a Mac you know from the Mac App Store or even outside of the Mac App Store but I want to show you a few little things like why I think it's essential and some things that you can do in motion now this is not a tutorial I'm not going to show you how to use motion I'm not even you know gonna go get into that because I don't feel that I would do justice to the software if I tried to do tutorials on motion 5 um, I would you know rather direct you to people who use motion 5 on a daily basis and are like some of the most awesome creators in the Apple Final Cut Pro 10 or motion community and, and I'll link those in the description But uh, let's jump over here to Final Cut Pro 10 real quick. All right So I've added this simple little effect here. You notice that it has the like spinning little radar Now this is a third-party plug-in, but what's cool about it. Let me open up a Viewer right here. Now let me find this plug-in this title plug-in. I believe it's this one right here. Yep That's it. So what's cool about this is I can modify this right here in Final Cut Pro 10. I can come over here and look at the different parameters or whatever for this particular, you know, I can change the color of it. Let's make this red. You know, I could do things like reposition it. I could add like some blur effect to it. I could scale it and make it larger or smaller. You know, change the position. You know, I can come over here and let me just, uh, I could do like transform it, crop it, distort it, you know, change the roll. Some basic things like that. But but what's cool is I can come up here and right click on it and say open in motion and it will open in motion I can play it and what's neat about this is if, if you take the time to learn some of the basics of motion 5 you can customize this third-party plugin this text overlay which is not really a text more like an animation but I can fully customize this and make it my own unique animation for my video you can do the same thing with text titles transitions let me hop back over here to final cut and let me just open up the transition pane here and i'm just going to use a stop transition so i have this uh let's go with the 3d text or 3d rectangle and i can say open a copy in motion hop over to motion and here's my transition you know, you can play and you can see the transition goes. Now I can fully customize this and make it my own. I can come up here on the inspector in motion, look at the properties, the behaviors, uh, the filters, you know, etc. cetera. And, and, and I can change all these things for this built-in transition right here in motion five and make it something unique, something that I didn't have to take hours and hours to build, something that I either bought a third-party plugin or it is built into Final Cut Pro 10 but I can take like a short amount of time and customize it to make it different from what someone else, you know, who has Final Cut Pro 10 will be using. You know, I can fully customize it. And it's awesome. And yeah, sure, you have options that you can, you know, 
adjust inside of Final Cut Pro, you know, right here for all these different plugins and text title effects, uh, text and title effects, uh, transitions, generators, etc. But I can open them up in motion and make this, you know, totally unique experience. And then the cool thing about it is I can save it back out to Final Cut Pro 10. I can customize. I can make custom transitions or text effects. You know, if you want to take the time to learn Motion 5, you can make, you know, your your own title generators, text generators. You know, if you take the time to learn Motion 5, you can make your own custom transitions, background generators, uh, title uh, sequences or title effects. You know, you can do all that. It's not hard to learn. There are thousands and hundreds of thousands of tutorials online about everything you can think of for motion 5 and if you took a little bit of time to watch them if you're an absolute beginner then you can start creating some really unique you know video uh, content that's going to stand out from the pack from anyone else who uses final cut pro 10 so that's why i think motion is an absolute must buy if you purchase final cut pro 10. now let's hop into compressor for a second so here's the thing with compressor. I own compressor. I've used it for a very long time and I recommend it to anyone who once you get started, you know, creating videos, creating films, creating short, whatever it is that you're creating. Once you get started with that and you're using Final Cut Pro 10 and, and you become more advanced, you're going to want to encode your videos for different formats out there, whether it's YouTube, Vimeo, Facebook, Twitter, uh, you know, Google Plus, you know, wherever these uh, social media video sharing sites are, they all have different like compression settings or encoding settings that you're going to want to adjust your projects for so that they look the best. And you can do a lot of this in Final Cut Pro 10, but it's not as robust as what you get with Compressor. Now, there are other applications that you can use uh, in place of Compressor that work just as well and, and are free. But we're not talking about that. We're talking about compressor. And uh, maybe I'll talk about some of those other options uh, in another video. But for this one, this is just about compressor. So if you're only going to upload to YouTube, you could use the built-in share to YouTube feature. You could you know, use some of the built-in features um, in Final Cut Pro 10 and then export your video either directly to YouTube or you could export it to your desktop. And, and for YouTube or, or, or one, you know, one spot, that's fine or whatever. And you know, you can have the correct encoding settings for say YouTube or whatever. So you probably don't need compressor if that's the only place you're going to share it to. But as you become more advanced and maybe you're starting to share your projects to more places, maybe you want to prep a project for like DVD or share somewhere else on the web, then compressor, it comes into play and it is an important part of your you know workflow. Um, especially, you know, when it comes to getting your projects ready for all these different places on the web. There's a lot more settings uh, inside Compressor, a lot more things that you can do on the encoding aspect inside Compressor that you can't do in Final Cut Pro 10. But for anyone that's just starting out and, and you're sharing your video to a single uh, place online, such as a YouTube or something, no, I don't think you need to pay the $49.99 for Compressor. I think you can get by with what's built into Final Cut Pro 10. So this was just a quick video I wanted to put out because uh, I see this question asked, like I said, a ton, whether it's on the Final Cut Pro 10 Apple uh, help uh, forums or whether it's on like some other like editing, you know, uh, forum online or social media or something like that. I see that question asked quite a bit. So I just figured I'd do a video on it, like a video. Hey, do I need motion and or compressor if I have Final Cut Pro 10? So I hope I did a pretty good job of explaining why you maybe want motion. Uh, if not, feel free to ask uh, down in the comment section below, or if you have a question and you need help with something, uh, same thing with compressor. If you want to know a little bit more about compressor, or if you want me to do a more advanced video uh, of both compressor and motion, maybe I'll go into a little more detail about that. Not so much a tutorial, but maybe more of a video explaining what compressor and motion does. Uh, I think that maybe that might be helpful for anyone um, trying to decide whether they should purchase one or the other then you know more helpful than just this video right here but I uh, just for this is this quick video like I said to say hey yes on motion definitely purchase it maybe on compressor all right thanks hope everyone has a great day peace I'm out